Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano and a chef on a mission. Today's mission is diet, nutrition, specifically the paleo diet. And Jamie, uh, we pulled up an interesting article on uh, the paleo diet. We what, did. What is that article? It's called The Paleo Diet Has It Wrong. Cavemen Did Eat Carbs. Okay, so the paleo diet is a quick um, go over. The paleo diet is the Atkins diet reincarnated. The Atkins diet is a diet that eliminates carbs, brings back a certain amount of carbs in your diet, but a very minimal amount of carbohydrates are consumed. The biggest problem with carbohydrates are carbohydrates are mislabeled. You have simple carbohydrates, you have complex carbohydrates, you have uh, simple natural carbohydrates like fruit. So you, whether it's a pretzel, which is made from white flour or a piece of bread, white bread versus something whole grain or nuts, uh, beans, uh, rice versus fruit. So there's many different types of carbohydrates and a lot of the authors of paleo diets don't distinguish carbs or one type of carbs. It's just, it's all carbs. It's, 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 it's not specific types of carbs. So with that being said, all the paleo diets out there are a carb limited diet based upon the same principles as the Atkins diet. With that being said, Jamie. All right, so let's read the article. The low carbohydrate paleo diet has attracted star advocates, including professional go golfer Phil Mickelson, actor Matthew McConaughey, and Republican presidential candidate Jeb Bush. But experts are now debating whether or not people in the Paleolithic era did actually eat carbs. A University of Chicago study published in August suggests that carbohydrate consumption, especially in the form of starch found in plant root tubers like those found on potatoes, was vital for the acceleration of brain growth over the last three million years. And some nutritionists say this is more evidence that a modern low carbohydrate version of the paleo diet may not be the healthiest or alternative even if it does help people lose weight now this is such a complex topic that i can go on and on and on so i'm not going to try to ramble on but there's so much to be said about this topic so right now we're just trying to say hey the book authors may have it wrong right now because most like most paleo authors say you want to eliminate as much carbs as you possibly can they're most of them are anti-fruit some of them say we'll have a couple berries, um, but basically restrict the carbohydrates. The goal of the paleo diet is to consume the same food groups as our hunter-gatherer ancestors, whose nutritional practices between 2.6 million and 10,000 years ago helped form our modern genetic makeup. These foods include fruits, vegetables, grass-fed meats, fish, seafood, free-range eggs, nuts, and seeds. The diet discourages frequent consumption of dairy, starch, and processed foods. So here's my biggest issue with all the paleo books. They're missing one major component of the paleo diet. First of all, we, when we were forag foragers, gatherers, we would eat really much anything we get our hands on. Bugs were a crucial part of a paleolithic era of our diet. People would eat worms, bugs, because those were abundant, right? Snails, snails are like a bug. So people would eat that, but there's no paleo book out there that I know that actually mentions this practice or advocates this practice as part of the diet. So that's the first thing that paleo, most, most paleo authors leave out. You want to get your bugs in, and most people say, well, I, I don't want to eat bugs because that's nasty. But believe it or not, there actually is a market, Jamie, for like cricket flour, and people make, now make some things out of cricket flour because cricket flour is high protein and this and that. But our ancestors would, when you pick up a rock and you saw something and you were hungry, you didn't discriminate and say, oh, this bug is not, you know, you're eating something, you're, that's what you're eating. Despite the modern diet's effectiveness at helping some people lose weight, the findings from the study suggest that these may not be the only foods our long ago ancestors ate. So there's no doubt that eliminating carbohydrates and sticking to a high protein diet will make you lose weight. There's no doubt, that's not in, ever in question. But if you read Dr. Greger's book, on the Atkins, the low carb craze, he has a beautiful 47 page book on the horrific dangers of eliminating or reducing your carbs to that level. It's a detriment to your health. You may lose weight, but just because you have a heart, healthy heart doesn't mean you're not gonna develop cancer. It doesn't mean you're not gonna develop other things along the way. So people say, oh, I'm skinny and I have a healthy heart, I'm healthy. That's not the full picture of your health ever. 
Eating meat may have kick-started the evolution of bigger brains, but cooked starchy foods together with more salivary amylase, amylase genes made us smarter still, the study concluded. The study says that to truly eat paleo, starch and higher levels of carbohydrates are necessary. It explains that the human brain uses about a quarter of the body's energy budget and about 60% of blood glucose. Energy needs, energy needs that wouldn't have been met on a low carbohydrate diet. Additional glucose was necessary for the pregnancy and lactation. The study also found evidence that the genes that code for the enzymes needed to digest starch evolved about one million years ago in the midst of Paleolithic era, further suggesting a diet that included significant levels of starch. Thus, the study concludes the paleo diet's exclusion of starch doesn't take into account the role it played in the development of the motto, the modern ge genome. genome. So there's a very good book out there um, that talks about fire and the development of fire. And once we once we created fire and could control fire and use fire to our advantage, that was when we came out of. Uh, that's when we formed communities. Communities formed around fire, and that's when we started cooking, especially cooking starches. And that is when our brains started growing. Maybe this is a great book. I forgot the name of the book, um, but that's when we started cooking tubers and starches, and our brains and extra energy and things like that. Um, do you have to go check on your cake? No. You're not. You're okay. Mm -hmm. She has her timer on. She's making a banana. Banana cake, banana bread, mm -hmm. so, all right. Up until now, there has been a heavy focus on the role of animal protein and cooking in the development of the human brain over the last two million years. And the importance of carbohydrate, particular in form of starch-rich plant foods, has been largely overlooked, the study found. Researchers at the University of Chicago compiled archaeological, anthropological, genetic, physiological, and anto... Uh, anatomical. Uh, I don't even know. What I don't know is. where you're at. Anatomical. Thank you. Anatomical. Yeah. Say it. Data to study the prominence of carbohydrates in the Paleolithic era. Humans for the study. As obesity rates rise, the weight loss market has become a growing industry. The commercial diet industry was a 2.5 billion dollar market in 2014 and is expected to grow at an annual rate of 5.5 percent for the next five years research firm IBIS World Estimates. Interest in the paleo diet concept, which reportedly originated in 1985 in a paper published in the New England Journal of Medicine, has also surged. Google searches for the term paleo diet increased steadily between 2009 and 2012 and peaked in 2013. Dubbed the year of the paleo due to the proliferation of books, blogs, and online recipes. With advocates ranging from famous athletes to politicians, the diet has been able to sustain its popularity. So, a couple key points. Your cells require glucose. Your cells, your brain requires that. Your cells require that. There's a reason why you look at a ripe mango, at an orange, at a nice piece of ripe fruit and start salivating. At watermelon, there's a reason why you look at these and feel a certain way. You would never look at a rabbit and say it's paleo or it's, or it's in my, my, my not a, a, autonomy or it's in my instinct to take that rabbit and tear it apart and stick my face in it and stick my face in its guts and eat every part of the animal. That is not a normal part of, of our process of how humans think, okay? So I, people say to me all the time, well, we're meant to eat meat. Well, if you're meant to eat meat, look at our hands, look at our teeth. What our, everything on our body resembles a vegetable, a produce eater. Every single aspect of our body is a produce eater. From the size of our colons, they're three, they're three, four times the size of our body for a reason, because we're designed to eat uh, fast metabolizing carbohydrates like fruit. When you eat a fruit, it metabolizes very quickly, it absorbs in your body very quickly, and you it passes through your system very quickly. So the longer it can stay in your system, the more you're gonna absorb from it. There's so many different similarities or differences versus Carnivores versus omnivores versus vegetarians. There's so many different differences. And again, this video is not to go through here and pick point and say, well, we're meant to be a vegetarian. We're not meant to be a vegetarian. We're meant to be a carnivore. I'm just simply stating that there 
is the reason why we crave carbohydrates. There's a there's there's logic behind that because our body knows. People say, oh, you know, your body knows what it's craving. People say all the time, oh, your body knows what it's craving, just trust it. But yet then we say, well, carbohydrates are bad. And again, all those carbohydrates are lumped into one big category of good carbohydrates, better carbohydrates, and fantastic carbohydrates. Here's the biggest issue. And this has been since the 20s uh, that they've known that diabetes can be linked to high fat consumption in your diet. Well, if you have diabetes and if you have sugar, uh, fructose, especially in the form of fruit, the two don't the two don't digest together. That's why in nature, fat and protein are typically a package deal and carbohydrates, a true carbohydrate, like a fruit, doesn't have fat and as much protein nearly as protein and fat together. So foods are packaged how they're supposed to be in nature. Don't think that we have to mysteriously make all of these combinations in food to make our digestion and our nutrition correct. There's no other animal on earth that, that says, I have to eat from this group, I have to eat from this group, I have to eat from that group. Every animal has its own type of food that it eats, okay? It doesn't matter what type of, type of horse you are, whether you're a fast metabolizing horse, a slow metabolizing horse, a racehorse, a zebra, a donkey, you eat grass. But humans think, oh my gosh, we're so smart. I have this blood type. I'm a fast metabolizer, slow metabolizer. I live in, in, in Canada versus living in Florida, so I have to eat different food. People look so hard into this and look for all these rationalities and all these things when it's just so simple. When you look at our what we have, our, our anatomy, and our cravings. So I'm saying, yes, we have cravings for sweets, but what we do for cravings for sweets, that's why there's this whole sweet industry. That's why there's candy and the sugar industry and sodas, because they're feeding on our body's natural cravings. But if you're giving your body the right sugar, the right glucose, fructose, fruit in its whole form, that's what our body's after. The industry has learned to manipulate and bastardize our own natural cravings. So now everything is, well, that's a carb and it's bad, and that's a carb and it's bad. What most people don't realize is if you eliminated the fat and got the fat down to a very low level in your diet, and if you got the protein down to a low level in your diet, and you had a very high carbohydrate, healthy high carbohydrate diet, you would feel fantastic. You, the health benefits are amazing. There's tons of doctors that actually prescribe to this, like Joel Furman, Dr. Bernard, uh, McDougal, who has his high starch diet, the starch solution, um, Neil Barnard, I might have said him already, Dr. Gregor, Dr. Clapper, Dean Ornish, the list goes on and on. The Pritikin Center, um, the list is phenomenally long of doctors that have an incredible success rate with reversing chronological, uh, not chronological, but chronic diseases in our body by putting their patients on a healthy, high carbohydrate diet and eliminating the fat. So with the success of all these doctors, people just, you know, totally look the opposite way and they're like, well, I'm paleo and, and I'm this and that because I'm supposed to eat meat. And, the, and you know, and the doctor says I have to eat meat. I need my protein. First of all, an, a grown female needs 45 grams of protein a day. A grown male needs 45 grams, 55 grams of protein a day. All you're doing for protein is you're taking protein in your body to repel, to repair cellular death. You're not helping with growth when you're an adult because you're not growing. A child, a baby, an infant from zero to six months doubles its body weight. That's the time that it needs the most protein. That's when it doubles its body weight. The most growth of your life happens between zero and six months when you're born in six months. So that's when you need the most protein. Other than that, throughout your whole life, you're as an adolescent, you're building, but until you're 18, after you're 18, you're just maintaining and maintaining. And then people say, well, I lift weights and this and that. <laughs> there's protein in everything. First of all, there's protein in vegetables. There's protein in fruit, believe it or not. Yes, fruit has protein. It might be a very small percentage by overall caloric percentages, like 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%. But something like broccoli has 40% protein. Asparagus, these things are off the chart. Spinach is 30% protein. There's a reason why Popeye would eat spinach and get strong because spinach is fantastic. Green vegetables, the green leafy vegetables are a win. So the whole myth of us trying that we need protein, 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 this is all contrived from the meat industry and it's all part of the supplement industry. It's all part of an industry that's making a ton of money based upon their so-called science. So of course I can go on and on and on with all of this, but the point of this was just to say, hey, paleoers, paleoers, is that a word, paleoers? 
paleoers, uh, you might be following the wrong diet. Now, again, the paleo diet is another reenactment of the Atkins diet because the Atkins diet was hugely successful. Again, that doctor that I mentioned was Dr. Greger. He has a 47-page book on why a low-carbohydrate diet is disastrous to your health. It's a quick 47-page read, and he has a lot of strong claims in there. Get that book, Dr. McGregor. You can download it. You can probably go to the library and get a copy of it. There's no reason to go out and buy it. So educate yourself and just look at some common sense. Look at our features of our body versus other animals out there. Okay, there's tons and tons of differences between carnivores and vegetarians. Tons. Did you know carnivores actually are colorblind? Humans actually see in color as in all the other primates that see in color? I mean, the list goes on and on and on, and people just deny the deny that time and time and time again. I know the paleo diet discourages milk and dairy, which is fantastic, because I don't know of any other animal that would um, walk up to another species and start uh, start, you know, robbing its food or, or suckling on another species like a human suckles on a cow or a goat or a sheep. But that's a whole nother video in itself. So I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.